let's try this again, people. I have tried to record this game three times. This time it better work. Alright, well, this is Zach of the Nom Nom Bros playing a new game I just got called Faster Than Light. Came out a little while ago. I was a little bit slow in getting it, unfortunately, because PayPal sometimes sucks. But we'll ignore that for now. I have played through this game a few times and have opened a couple of ships. This is my favorite, the NG. But we're going to be starting with the Kestrel. I'm going to go pretty much in order that I get them. So, expect that. Alright. You need to be male. You need to be Captain Chandler. Alright, as I have already said a few times, but that you guys will never see because life hates me slightly less than it hates Brandon, I am going to have a tutorial episode for this series, and this is it. It's not going to be too in-depth, it's just going to cover some of the basics. So if you're watching this, and you've already seen this game before, skip to the second one episode, I mean. The data you carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. You'll need supplies for the journey, so make sure to explore each sector before moving on to the next, but get to the exit before the pursuing rebel fleet catches up. Blah, 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 blah. Now, time to explain things. First off, we're going to start with the basic systems. <coughs> oh, I apologize for that. That was gross. Okay, so, to start with, you have four basic systems that are pretty much the most important systems when it comes to overall combat. You then have some subsystems and some other systems that are important, blah, blah, blah. But we'll start with the basics. This, over here, as you can tell by this symbol, is the piloting. Uh, basically, it's the cockpit. It's the piloting system. Piloting, as I will read here, requires a crew member to evade in combat or jump. Jumping is obviously how you get around in this game, and I'll show that in a moment. Hello, Steam. I closed that. What the hell, Steam? Die. Okay, well, I apologize for that, but Steam apparently doesn't listen to me. Alright. So the piloting system, as you can imagine, is what allows us to fly around in space. It also increases our evade chance, which is percent chance to dodge incoming fire. Huh. And, ha and having a crew member on any system increases your chance for that system to work at its optimum efficiency, which in this case obviously just means better chance to dodge. Marshall we're going to have on weapons, because he did very good in my initial run, and Brandon's going to be on shields because he sucks. So, moving back over here, the first system we have here is shields. Sustains damage reducing shields. Manning increases shield recharge rate. Currently it's fully powered and manned by a crew member. Woo! All that really means is that it, the shield room keeps this bubbly orby thing around us alive so that we don't die. It's very important, as you can imagine. Engines, well, slightly less important. To our survival, anyway. That's what allows us to jump and increases our evasion. If we have someone manning it, I think it goes up to 15 if we have someone manning it right now. Yeah, but you can decide for yourself if that's worth it or not early game. When you get different ships, you get different abilities and whatnot. Sometimes you get different, you know, crewmates and whatnot. But we'll get into that when we get to those particular ships. Um, that's pretty much it for engines. So, oxygen. That's what keeps you alive. You have an oxygen count in your rooms, and as I'll demonstrate here, when a room is either exposed to the vacuum of space or if you know, the oxygen is dead. It starts to slowly lose oxygen. This room is going to start... That's a text message. Is going to start getting pinker and pinker and then turn red and eventually it'll get like this room and we'll run out of oxygen entirely. When that happens, people start to suffocate in it. They lose health over time. It's just bad. 
It is a good idea to do if enemies are invading, but, or if there's fire, because fire will go out if there's no oxygen, just like in real life. But you gotta kinda, you know, wish, it's, it's not really a risk-reward scenario, it's more of a, you could die if you do this scenario. It's mostly just a risk with minor rewards. So that's a, that's not a subsystem, that's stuff over here that we'll talk about. But just like the Medibay, it's it's an unmanned system. So if I could have someone in here and it would do absolutely nothing for the oxygen recharge rate or anything like that. Same thing with the Medibay, which you put people in to heal. The only real quirk about the Medibay is that you can only put three people in here. So keep that in mind. Obviously, the Medibay works like you would expect. When someone goes in, they heal within it. I can't, well, actually I can't. Brandon, get in the airlock. I need to demonstrate this. So now you'll see, as shown here, and over top of him, and when you scroll over him, Brandon is taking damage. When he starts getting low, the game will make a beeping noise, and then that's time to GTFO. It'll also start flashing. So, oh no, he's gonna die! So put him in the medibay, and then he'll regenerate health. You can increase the... by going here to the up upgrades, you can increase the speed at which people heal up to three times, which is basically overpowered. But we'll get in, we'll, I'll talk more about these upgrades in a future episode when I'm upgrading them. I'm not going to go into super detail here. If we go over here, we've got our crew. Uh, humans are common and uninteresting, no exceptional traits. I'll get into whether or not that's a strength or a weakness later. But if we come to weapons, each weapon requires a certain amount of energy to use, and you have a have to you have, bleh, you have to have a certain amount of energy slot power open so that you can power these weapons. Like currently, I have three potential energy slots for my weapons, and the combined amount for them is three. If I get another one that's one, two, three, four, however many, I can't power it because I don't have enough, and I don't have enough extra energy. So I can only power these two starting weapons, which work very well for the beginning, of course. Brandon, get back on shields. What are you doing? If we... Well, actually, before I do that, there are two other major systems you can get. Well, actually, no, that's not true. There are three. None of which I'm going to talk about right now, because they're found primarily on certain ships that you can get when you open them, and I want to talk about them there. They are teleporters, cloaking, and drone control. Like I said, I'll talk about that later. Subsystems, you've got piloting, of course. Uh, the cool thing about subsystems is you don't have to use this energy to power them. So, like, if I buy a subsystem upgrade, it's automatically powered. I don't have to buy it up here and then down here at the reactor as well. So these are always powered by themselves. The secondary one we've got is sensors. Not super useful, admittedly. If something has to die, let it be your sensors. Basically what they do is they let me see all the stuff in my ship. Normally, I can only sh see within a room that a guy is in. So like I could see these three rooms, but the others would be dark. Or in the case of a few species, there's specific things you can do, blah blah blah. Again, you'll see it later. The final subsystem is pretty much the most important. I mean, piloting is more important because it helps you move, but in combat, you want to worry most about doors. Because doors let you open all the doors, and close all the doors. And since enemies, when you upgrade the doors, have to break in, and you know, it takes a while to break in, you can suffocate them, like if they're here, oh no, I'm dying! Stuff like that. You can open all the doors. If you lose oxygen in one place, opening the doors increases the speed at which the oxygen regenerates. And if you click twice on this, it opens all of the doors. You don't want that, trust me. Now that's all the time I really have for this episode. First, if there. So I'm just going to briefly say this is fuel, missiles, drone parts, shields, health, and money. I'll explain all of that in more detail as we go along. Most of it's pretty self-explanatory, like shields, health, and money. But I'll explain how all of these work in the next episode. Hope you guys enjoy this, and I really hope that this turns out, because if it doesn't, I'm going to be so annoyed. Thank you for watching. This has been Zach of the Nom Nom Bros. Goodbye.